Hello and welcome to Read Right Now. Now the window behind me might give you a clue to where we are this week because our learner John has taken me to the Waterford Crystal Factory here in Waterford because he wants to try his hand at a bit of glass making. Let's go and find him. Hi Derek. Hello. I'm Sinead Christian, you're very welcome. I'm the PR manager and I'm going to be showing you around today. Great stuff, thanks very much indeed. I'm looking for John, our learner. Do you know where he is? John is actually in the visitor centre up here on the right hand side. Okay, there. so I'll go and find him. I'm going to meet you later on, I believe. Yes, I'll touch base with you later okay, on. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Bye. John. The Waterford Crystal tradition began in 1783 and despite a hundred year halt in between, still produces some of the most sought after crystal in the world. Now you may recognise some of these pieces from major sporting events. We've trophies here for golf, tennis and even rugby. Mind you, they're only replicas because the originals would be priceless. And that's something we're dealing with in today's programme, finance. Because, like it or not, we all have to deal with banking in our daily lives. Whether it's filling out a lodgement slip or simply putting our cards into an ATM machine. And Laura will have learning points on both. We'll also be looking at CH and SH words in our spelling tip. Okay, now it's time to find John, and I have a sneaking suspicion just where he might be. Hello, John. Hello, Derek. How are you? How about? I find you in the Lismore range. Yeah, from Lismore myself, Derek. Really? What's yeah. Lismore like? Massive. We want to tie this town there this year. Okay, we so what, what are you going to be doing in the factory here today? I'm actually going to be cutting a piece of glass from my own new house. Oh, see? Yeah, and we were doing a bit of painting and things there. Guys. That's if I get it, like. Yeah, you will get it, of course, Sinead. Guys, the next tour is about to go shortly, so we need to be heading that way. Right, let's go right, on the tour so and see what the factory's all about. All the times I've been in Waterford, I've never been on the tour. Really? John owns his own farm in Lismore, County Waterford. Up until a few years ago, he relied on neighbours to help him with all his paperwork, as he felt he had no other option. One day, I was talking to a pal of mine, and he said, there is another chance, he says. There is education, he says. Why don't you chance that? So I went into the place and inquired, and I met um, Nicola. And Nicola was very helpful to me. She got on to uh, Margaret. Margaret is my teacher at Bowdoin is more at the moment and she's there with the last three years. Now we're going for the fourth, this is our fourth year together. She asked me the first day, what do you really want to do? And I said, look Margaret, I says, I have a bit of land at home. I said, would, would you be able to give me help on the paperwork? And she said, we will. So we started from there on then. We've never looked back since. This is our new house, and we expect to be in here in a month's time. We hope to have many happy times in here, myself, my mother, and my brother. School, I found I had no help at home, so I decided that there was only one thing leave. I left at 16 years of age, but I regret it. When father died, I took over the farm, and we had to start building out farms for bits and things. It's not easy to be going looking for um, help all the time. When you're facing it for 30 years of age, like, and like you say to yourself, why didn't you keep going to the education you had the chance? But I found that it, it didn't, it didn't approve at the time. Are we getting on? Good morning, Tom. Hey, John. How are things? Not bad. I just ran out the paint again. Not you know problem. that old kind of paint I got the last day. Oh, we'll have a look here. Now. Yeah. You know the colour you I got do, yeah. Yet. We'll go down and mix it up again. Yeah, yeah. that's so grand. We'll get that clear again. Yeah, right, right so. Okay. Yeah. It's very personal not to be able to read and to have another person know that you cannot read. I know what way it is now, but now I'm very comfortable in it. I'm getting my my bit bit of education now and I'm happy with what I'm getting. I've got back three people back to adult education. But it's not easy. I would not like anyone to come and approach me and say, look John, there is a place 
for the likes of you and Liz Moore. It's a very hard thing to say. They tell you, buzz off. What do you mean? Do you mean I'm a fool? No, I don't mean they're fools. I just, I have known what is. It was very hard to go back first day. But I've spoken to three or four different people and have taken me up and they were delighted after. And they said that you were fair meant to do it. Hi there. Not too bad, hard yell. When the AGM machine arrived in this morning, the Margaret had brought me down to the machine and she had got me used to doing bills, doing the phone bill on it, the ESB bill on it, and taking out money out of the wall. In this reading tip, we're looking at using an ATM. ATM stands for Automatic Teller Machine, and using an ATM is a fast and easy way to get money out of your bank account. Different banks give them different names, like Banklink or Pass Machine, and of course, many of us just talk about the hole in the wall. So how do you use an ATM to take out money? Most ATM machines have more or less the same instructions. So if we look at this one, the first thing we see is the message, please insert your card. Next comes, please enter your personal identification number. Your personal identification number or PIN number given to you by the bank is made up of four numbers. Once you put in your PIN number, you're asked to select transaction required. There's a whole range of options to choose from, but the most common ones used are probably withdrawal without receipt and withdrawal with receipt. Now we're asked to select the type of account from which you require withdrawal. In this case, it's either current or personal bank account or cash save. Now it says, please select euro amount required. Let's choose 20 euro for this example. Your transaction is being processed, please wait. This tells me that my money is on the way and then I get my card back. In a few moments, the ATM gives you your money. It'll say, please take your cash, provided of course that you haven't already spent it all. And don't forget you can get additional exercises on everything we featured in today's programme by calling us on 1800 20 20 65. And when you do that, we'll send you out a copy of the free Read Right Now workbook. The number again, 1800 20 20 65. And the lines are open right now, so call us. OK, guys, on we go. This is the start of our tour where we start with a video. Good. What's the video about? The video is about our, um, our designers and about the production process and it introduces people to the tour. How many people come in here every year? It's close on 400,000 people. It's a lot, isn't it? It is an awful lot. And all spending? Well, most of them would be here. As the video includes information on designers and the design process, it was to prove very useful for John when the tour was over. John was now about to start the process of creating his own unique Lismore vase. So now this is where it's all at, Sinead. This is where it's at. This is the blowing room and we're going to introduce John to Terence O'Neill. John, this is Terence. This is John, the important guy today. So they're going off to do their blowing. They're going to do some blowing, that's correct, yeah. And um, a week or so ago, um, we sent John some information so that he wouldn't have to start from scratch. Oh, some see. information on designs and to give him some inspiration and ideas. So he has an idea of what he's going to make, you know, like indeed. at the start. Yeah. We're going to give you the, the materials that we normally use, the wooden blocks and the biters. And out of that, then you're going to shape the glass. Yeah. The information Sinead sent to John went to his tutor, Margaret Lee's email address. Last week, he organised to meet her at the local library. Good morning. How are you? Not too bad. You ready? Yeah. See you later. We're going to go have a quiz for today. Well done. So this is the design that was sent up to yes. you. So, what do you Yes, there's more design now, is it? There's more design. You know, you see, look, yeah. the base nice of it. It's nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. Mm. 
wonder what part of that now will you be doing? There's another know. thing, yeah. Do you have a design in a book? I do, yeah. Let us have a look. That's there's some nice glasses there now, aren't there? Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, which, which one, one, one would you prefer? <laughs> I don't know, sure. I suppose we go for the... The tumbler. One. Yeah, the tumbler would be nice, mm, wouldn't it? Very, very That's nice. That's G, isn't it? Mm. This is this one. G, yeah. yeah. Very They're nice, there. there's more glasses nice, isn't mm, it? It's lovely. But what about the vase? Yeah. The vase, okay. The vase would be probably something like... Ooh, something. Like that one, yeah. yeah right. Just something like this. Yeah, what's something that one now? What's that one? Let's see, there's a little more design to it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Square vase. <coughs> I think that's probably more like the... Yeah, so are you going to kind of um, make all of this and forget about your spellings? No. You're going to no. keep at the spellings? No way. I'll keep at the spellings. Really? Towards yeah. the night. Yeah. Sharp. Eight o'clock, yeah. This spelling tip is about the sounds of some letters. Most of the time, each letter in the alphabet has one sound. The letter S, for example, has the sound s, as in sip or sister. And you can hear the sound of the letter H in the words hop or happy. But when we put S and H together, we get a new sound, like in these words, ship, shop, shine, show. All these words begin with SH, which together make the sound sh. We can get this sound at the ends of words too. For example, in cash, bush, dish. Or in the middle of a word, like in fashion or mushroom. And what happens when we put C and H together? Well, if we listen to words like chip, chat, check, chicken, we can hear that C and H together make the sound ch. This sound is also at the end of some words like rich, match, and search. Listen out for these sounds, sh and ch, as it can help you spell certain words. Right